wanna know what happens when you get an A520 with a 59.50 with a 59.50X. Over a week ago, I picked up an A520 motherboard for 50 Aussie dollars and I was thinking to myself, well, this is a really good price for a motherboard. But then when I went on to the Gigabyte website, I was just getting sold. And I was thinking to myself, wow, like four plus three phase power design, digital? This thing sounds like it's designed to run a power plant through it. And then I'm going through some of the other marketing that they're, they're talking about ultra durable. And I thought, okay, there's only one way to put this marketing to the test. And that's to throw a 16 core 32 threaded CPU like the Ryzen 5950X through it and see how it handles it. So let's take that CPU, put it on this A520 motherboard and see if Gigabyte's marketing can really live up to the hype right after this quick sponsor spot. Do you feel like this when you see this? Well, if so, you can get rid of that Windows activation message with today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, for as little as $12 USD. After you use that coupon, BFTYC, you can get activated today. Links in the description below. So our first test here is to conduct a baseline score where we're going to be testing out the 5950X on an X570 motherboard. And then we're going to get those results and then compare them to the A520. Let the test begin and then see what troubles we come into, or if we do come into any problems, on the A520. So changing from the X570 to the A520, the first uh, biggest difference that I can see here is that we've got no PCIe Gen 4 and VME M.2 support. So this will mean that hopefully this SSD doesn't overheat because it's running at slower speeds. But since it does have a Gen 4 chip and generally they are cooled with a heatsink, I'm still going to be uh, mindful that it could overheat. So I'll watch for the temperatures on that. And here we are now, complete with all the testing and numbers of the A520 motherboard. And it was actually really surprising that all the gaming numbers came in virtually the same versus the X570. In fact, the Geekbench 5 multi-core score came in a little bit better on the A520 as opposed to the X570. And I attribute this, this is kind of the same trend that I saw when I tested out an A320 with a Ryzen 5 3600 in the past. And I'll put the uh, link to that video up there, which had some different tests and had some of the same reasoning as to why I think an A520 could edge out a X570. But that aside, the one thing that we've got going on here that is different is the fact that the VRM gets to a smoking hot 132 degrees and now it's in a 24c ambient environment which is pretty decent so this vrm is definitely not suitable for a 5950x when you're running cinebench r20 however gigabyte was saying on their website look we've got a vrm it's got four tough guys well four plus three tough guy vrm and then the the uh, vrm speaking to me and it's telling me, hey, look, we're not really tough guys. We're just like appearing as tough guys and something has to be done about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give our little Romulan soldiers some armor here and then see if we put a fan on that, if that'll keep the temperatures fine. And also, of course, the performance up because when the VRM starts throttling, which it does, the power consumption levels were all over the place. They were going from 250 watts down to 130 watts. And also the performance was gradually declining from the first run, which got in the 9,000s, all the way down to high 7,000s. So there was a performance hit there. And that was the only real difference we saw versus the X570. But let's see if we can fix that right now.
So basically, what can I say right now, but I'm kind of surprised because I came into this video thinking, all right, this is gonna be an absolute complete joke. We're gonna have so many lols and we're, hopefully we can see some smoke. But it soon became apparent when I ran the Cinebench R20 the first time and we got a score that was close to the X570 that this had potential. And the reason being was because usually if something's not up to the job, it'll throttle just straight away, whether it's a cooler or in this case, a VRM. And then after running the gaming numbers, they didn't throttle without the cooling solution on this. So putting on your own little heat sinks and then a fan on top of that did indeed make the performance a lot better. And keep in mind, it's not ideal. Like you wouldn't want to go out and buy a 5950X and an A520 motherboard. I don't think anyone in their right mind would go and do that because you're probably going to be buying the 5950X for productivity and work purposes. And so with that, you would want the best motherboard to match the job. But if you're a gamer and say, for instance, the 5600X or a 5800X, and you're on a budget and you don't care about CPU overclocking, then that's another video for another day. But of course, some of the drawbacks, even with the heatsink and the fan on top, the VRM was still getting to over 100 degrees, where after that it reduces the amount of output and then that leads to slower speeds and of course, saves itself from catastrophe. But the most odd thing to me about this whole experiment with this motherboard was that when I put the thermo imaging camera over the VRM, we, I don't even think we were using four of the phases. I think it was either two or three that were being used, especially when we had the heat sinks and the fan on top of the VRM the second time. The heat signatures were showing that not all the side four phases were being utilized. And I know Gigabyte advertised four plus three, and that four phases is dedicated towards the CPU, but perhaps it might be reversed where it's a three plus four. And at that point, you might be sitting in your chair and you're like, well, Brian, three plus four and four plus three, they, they both equal seven. Auto-tune, however, out of the way. The reason I like to do these experiments, I think, deep down, is that I like to extract the most value out of what you have. And getting this motherboard for 50 Aussie dollars really strikes hard value for me. I mean, some of these X570 motherboards, at least in Australia, will cost in excess of four, five hundred dollars. And the fact that once I put some heat sinks and a fan on this thing, it was performing just like an X570, a motherboard even with a little bit more performance on top, I was actually really satisfied. And when it all boils down to it, value is what you make it. Though if you are getting an A520, one thing I will point out and one problem I did come into that will stop you in your tracks is don't get a Gen 4 M.2 for at least this motherboard in particular, where it just flat out wouldn't work no matter what I tried. And I even tried putting it in this uh, Zeus uh, Aeon uh, adapter with the USB type C to USB type A, and that wouldn't even recognize it either. In fact, that was so weird to the point where it froze the whole computer. So if you wanna get an A520 motherboard, at least these budget gigabyte ones, I would stick to either SATA drives or of course, Gen 3 M.2 NVMEs. Anyway, guys, with that aside, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comment section below, what do you think about today's weird experiment? Personally, this is some of the most fun for me. I like testing things that I don't know the outcome of. And this was certainly one of those things that surprised me on the outcome. I didn't expect just that. And we got the question of the day here too, which comes from Luther Leonard, and they ask, 4690K plus 2080 super question mark. Uh, it depends if you're playing at 1080p high refresh, I would definitely think about getting a better CPU. 2080 super is quite an expensive graphics card and you'd probably wanna pair it with at least even something like a 10100, which will give you much better uh, FPS and bang for buck than the 4690K will. Uh, being of course four cores, eight threads versus four cores, four threads and having DDR4 support for higher memory speeds you should be doing a lot more even if you're on a budget like that. Though personally, if I had a little bit extra money, I would go for the 11400F or say the Ryzen 5 3600. Both of those are a little bit more expensive, but you do get two more cores, four more threads. Anyway, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content. Be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. Actually, we can do it in auto-tune now. Ring the bell.